Hello everyone, it's Gomrath here, and today I'm going to be bringing you a guide on the best pets in Kalimdor. I'm going to do every continent and just talk about the best pets to catch in each zone and the kind of breed that you want to look for. Let's get started in Ogremar. So in Ogremar, there is actually a couple useful pets. Now, the add-on that I have right here, this is Pet Tracker. It's a really fantastic add-on, especially if you're relatively new to the game. These, these are all the pets that are available in Ogremar. And it counts all, like, bonus events. It counts everything that you can learn from the trainers here. It counts all the different vendors here. So there's quite a few pets in Ogremar. And as you, for a beginner, really wonderful pet to pick up is the Blue Clockwork Rocket Bot. Um, and they are right over here. I'll show you where they're at. Now, starting out in pet battles, it's really nice to have a couple more mechanical type pets just because a lot of the tamers that you're going to go against have a lot of beasts. And this guy right here, he sells these blue rocket bots, only 40 gold. Um, and I would recommend the power speed breed over any other breed. So, for example, yeah, look, I just got another power speed breed. View and journal. And the add-on that I'm using to see the breed of the pet is breed ID. And if you don't know anything about breeds, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for a fantastic video that was put together by a guy named Hyru, who does a really wonderful pet battle channel. But I think as far as Ogremar goes, uh, just the rest of the wild-caught pets here, like these spiny lizards and dung beetles, there's just nothing really special, neither with these water snakes or toads. Yeah, I would just recommend picking up the rocket bot, and then when you got the special events going on, try to pick those up as well. Um, there's also the robo chicken, but you can also catch him out in the wild. So that'll do it for Ogremar. Now there's basically nothing in Ashara that you can... That'd be very helpful. I'd just skip over this zone if you're collecting pets. All right, I'm in Mount Hyjal right now. And in Mount Hyjal, there's actually a pet that's fairly useful. I don't use him a ton, but uh, not a bad pet to collect, especially when you're beginning your collection. Uh, there's these Nordrasil Wisps, okay? And the breed of Nordrasil Wisp that you want is the SS breed. It is by far the best. Now... A lot of people, um, when they're starting out, they're looking for a rare of a pet. I remember when I was first pet battling, what I would do is I would go to every zone and I would spend a long time catching a rare variant of every single pet. Now, this held true for most, um, honestly, most of Kalimdor, but I just did not have the stamina to make that happen. So what I would recommend, just find an SS breed and doesn't matter the rarity because once you get up to drain ore and especially in the broken isles you'll have so many pet charms that you won't know what to do with and you'll be able to make any pet that's the correct breed um the rare variant and just what makes this guy useful is he's got um flash and then light which flash blinds the target uh reducing their hit chance by 50 percent for two rounds and it's actually three rounds because you're so fast with 357 speed that it counts for the round that you blind them and an additional two rounds. And then you could use light, which deals double damage. And then you either use arcane explosion or soul ward. So I don't use this guy a ton. There is the Hyjal Wisp, which drops from the Battle for Mount Hyjal, which I think is a better pet. But this is still a nice pet to pick up uh, when you're beginning your collection. Nothing really to see or to grab here. So, yeah, I'd just basically skip Moonglide. All right, we've made our way over to Winter Spring. And actually, during this particular time of year, this is the only time that you can catch the Snowy Owl. He is a seasonal pet that only shows up during the calendar months of winter. So I would recommend snagging him as of the making of this video, which is actually February 14th, Valentine's Day. So... Uh, I would definitely pick him up before he becomes unavailable. The other thing that is in this zone are these robot pets. Now, the reason you don't hear me very much talking about all these other pets, like the Alpine Chipmunk or the Alpine Hare, uh, I mean, the Hare is a decent pet, especially if you can get the SS breed of it. 
which I think I have here, Alpine hair. Yeah, I've got the SS breed. But there's a lot of SS breeds of hares that are all exactly the same. They all have the same moveset. Uh, you can pick one up here or in a different zone. Just depends on what your your pet level is. Okay, so these are pets I would also def definitely recommend picking up. Oh, I forget on this guy I'm hated by. I did the... Oh, man. Dang it. Well, now you get to see my main die because I don't want to fight these guys. Let's see. All right, well, before I was so rudely interrupted by all these stupid goblins, uh, I was going to show you the Robo Chick. Now, in this zone, there's also a Robo Cub and a Robo Chick and a Robo Varmint. So they have three robotic pets in this area. Now, I would recommend us always to go for pure breeds, so an SS breed or an HH breed, but... For this particular pet, I like the power speed breed because power and speed are things that I really like to prioritize. Um, so I'd recommend picking up these three mechanical type pets just because there are so many tamers in the world that have beasts. And anyway, mechanical are fantastic pets for the vast majority of PvE. And they have a fantastic racial in that when they die, they come back to health with 35% uh, health. Or 20% health. I'm not exactly sure the exact percentage. What is it? it says comes back. Oh, 20%. There you go. So yeah, those are the three pets that I would pick up here in winter spring, as well as the owl, the snowy owl, if it's during that time of year, just so you don't have to wait. Okay. All right, we are over here in Darkshire now, or Darkshore. Pardon me. And there's actually a few pets that I think are worth picking up, especially if this is the first time you're going through here. Uh, these snails, shimmering snails, are actually pretty solid. I would definitely go for the health power breed. I picked up an HH breed because I already have a couple other snails that are health power breeds. But snails are just really, really useful pets, um, especially with some of the Draenor tamers. They're the double counters to elementals. So, oh, pardon me. I would... Definitely re pick, recommend picking these guys up. Um, also, if you have an Alliance Alt, the Gilnean Raven, he used to be like the number one pet in the game when it came to having the Nocturnal Strike uh, Call Darkness combo. I think the Northern Hawk Owl from Train or not Train or from the Broken Isles is actually better than this pet. But yeah, you could go pick him up. They still sell for a stupid amount of gold on the auction house, even though there's better pets than this one that still do the same thing correctly, or better in my opinion. So, in this zone, pick up the snail. Uh, he's definitely worth having. And if you're Alliance, I would do the quest for Withers. I need to do that. But that. Oh, also the Dark Shore Cub. I think he's actually the hardest hitting pet in the game with uh, Rampage or Maul. Let's see him. Yeah, I think he's got the highest attack power value of any pet that can use them all. Yeah. So I would also pick up a Dark Shore Cub and I'd go for a Power Power Breed because he's the only Power Power Breed that can use it. So there's the, there's Dark Shore for you. All right, I'm over here in Fellwood and there's actually one pet that I would recommend parking an alt over here and that's the Mini Infernal. Now, this guy right here, he is a very rare spawn. It took me almost, I'd say a week of logging on a couple times a day on an alt just to see if they were in this area because they spawn just here where all these elementals are. And anyway, he's, he's on a really long timer. But if you can manage to pick up one of these, this is just a kind of a fun one to add to your collection. I would recommend the Power Power Breed more than anything else or the HH breed but I kind of gave up after farming for weeks and only being able to pick up these two so he's really the only thing in Fellwood that's worth picking up especially for a new collector <laughs> nothing really special about Athen Ashenvale so I would just kind of skip this if you're looking for any useful pets in this particular zone Right, we're over here in the Stone Talon Mountains, and once again, these are just two pets that are actually caught in a number of areas. These are ones that I covered over in winter spring. 
but I just recommend picking up the mechanical type pets because the rest of these pets here are very, very much lackluster. So you can snag the mechanical pets here or you can snag them up in uh, winter spring. All right, I'm over here in the Northern Barrens and there's actually two pets that I would pick up if you're in the Barrens. And this pet is kind of surprising how she's become one of my favorites to deal with aquatic types. But it is the North or the Harpy Youngling. And she comes in two breeds, the Balanced Balanced and the Health Balanced. Now, one thing about breeds, just if you haven't watched that video yet, if you get a Balanced Balanced breed, it's the least amount of stats that you can possibly roll. Like the least amount of bonus stats. So I would go for the Health Balanced breed on the Harpy Youngling. And then also you could pick up the cheetah cub. Now the cheetah cub, uh, he's just found actually all over the place. And he only comes in the SS breed and he's the fastest pet in the game. He has 390 speed, but he's got like garbage for attack and absolutely no health. So he's not that useful. He's kind of cool just because he's the fastest pet in the game. Uh, but yeah, those are the two that I pick up in the Barrens. I'm in the Northern Barrens right now though. All right, I'm making my way from the Northern Barrens, passing through the Southern Barrens into Mulgore, and I just kind of want to talk about these four zones really quick, where there's not really anything special in any of them. So there's nothing really fantastic in either of these four zones. So you basically could just go through and skip them when it comes to collecting useful pets. We are in Feralis now. And this is honestly one of my favorite zones in the game. Not only because I had a super big nostalgia moment in Feralis, like I remember questing here on my first character, Gomrath, with my older brother. He was on his, I think he was on his priest, or he may have been on his shaman. He had a shaman named Nippalicious that he thought was really hilarious. And anyway, then he stopped leveling him because funny names are only get you so far. So if you're in this zone, there are two pets that you definitely need to pick up. Okay, the first is another fairy dragon, which is one of my favorite pets in the entire game. I would recommend the power power breed and the speed speed breed. Uh, I also picked up a power balance just because it's the fastest slash speediest pet that you, no, not fastest slash speediest. It's the hardest hitting, fastest combo that you can get. There's no power speed breed here. But definitely pick up these Nether Fairy Dragons. They are so fantastic. I can't tell you how much I use them. And then the other pet to pick up here is the Stunted Yeti. Now, the Stunted Yeti only comes in the garbage breed of Health Balance. And it's actually not terrible for a humanoid pet. Just because the humanoid racials, they heal for 4% of their health every time they deal damage. And what makes the Yeti pretty awesome is he's got two moves here uh, that are really, really strong versus dragons because humanoids are good versus dragons. And then he's got all these abilities here that are good versus critters. And so he is the first double counter to critter type pets that you can pick up in the game. And he's just found over here in this cave area. So pick up the nether fairy dragon and a stunted yeti from Feralis. Okay, we are over here in Desolus, the once place that was Desolus, and now is like half Desolus as well, Grendor said so hilariously now in the zone uh once again we're kind of faced with just a bunch of lackluster pets uh i would recommend picking up a couple of the elemental pets that are over here just because if you're low level and you need to beat a tamer that's challenging for example uh over here cassandra in the southern barrens you know she can sometimes be a trainer that people struggle with because they just don't have a lot of low level elemental pets but as you can see this zone the the pet level is level nine so if you caught three level nine pets three level nine elementals you would have no problem whatsoever beating cassandra um over there so at a desolus only thing i'd really recommend are the elementals over here by the entrance of maradon all right, now we are in Silithus, and actually this is the only pet in the game that's keeping me from getting my uh, zookeeper title, it is the Quijari Guardian. Now, this guardian only spawns during the summer, and that's the calendar months of summer, so it counts as the first day of summer uh, till when fall starts. So it's only available a few months a year. I would recommend picking up a Power Power Breed, a Speed Speed Breed, and an HH Breed. Those are the ones I'm going to farm for when this guy's available. 
Um, but other than that, there's nothing really special about this zone. Alright, our safari has taken us finally down to Ungoro Crater. Now, I remember the first time I came in here, I was just super intimidated by all the giant dinosaurs that are all over the place. And this is actually the first beast pet that I'm going to be mentioning on this list that's worth picking up. So, the Dimetrodon Hatchling here is a power power breed. And anytime you can get a pure breed of any pet, it makes it significantly better. Now, this guy is a Critter Massacre. Well, Butcher. Let's just say Critter Butcher, not a Massacre. -er. So, he just has a really high attack power at 341 attack, and he'll just shred any kind of critter that gets in front of him. I mean, most beast type, beast type pets will, but this guy in particular, he's really, really strong versus critters, so I'd recommend picking him up. Alright, we've made our way south to Ulduam, and there's nothing particularly amazing here. Uh... Yeah, there just really is nothing all that special in this area. Now there is the crawl or the crawling claw, which you get from archaeology, but apparently it's crazy rare, and I have not spent the time doing archaeology. So that's a pet that you can pick up if you're into archaeology and you're lucky enough to get it. You could either keep it for your collection or sell it on the auction house because it sells like really really high. But nothing special in Uldum. All right, we are down in Tanaris and. Right now there's a sandstorm happening. You see the cool weather effects on my screen, which makes these little guys capturable, these silithid hatchlings. Now these are the, or these are only capturable when there's a sandstorm going on outside. And I think it's one of the few beast type pets that actually has the sandstorm ability. Uh, they're just kind of cool looking, something that you might want to snag when you're down here. Uh, but yeah, that's the, definitely the first pet that I would pick up well in here and I'd recommend the health power breed just because you know more health uh, means they last longer and more power means they hit harder so he's the breed that I would go for the other pet in Tanneris that you definitely want to pick up is the infinite whelpling now he's a solid tier 2 pet uh, he's not fantastic at anything really He's got some moves that are strong versus uh, magic types, which almost all dragons do. And he's got a pretty strong heal, as well as early advantage, which is a cool move that is sometimes kind of hard to use. But I'd recommend picking up the power, power Power Breed and the Power Speed Breed. Both of them are really great pets. And they're just found outside the entrance to um, Caverns of Time, and they're all inside of the Caverns of Time thing as well. So, he's the other pet I'd pick up here. Alright, we are now in Duskwalla Marsh, and there's actually a pet that I would definitely pick up here. It's the Spawn of Anixia. As you can see, there's kind of a trend with the pets that I would pick up. A lot of them are dragon types or uh, pure breed pets um, that are particularly good at like, a certain thing. Now, I don't really use my Spawn of Anixia that often just because I've got other dragons that I like better. But the power power breed, solid amount of attack, you know, standard amount of health, really slow. That's one thing that kind of cripples dragons is they're just slow as can be. So he's the only guy who I'd pick up here in Duskwalla Marsh. Also, there's nothing really special about Thousand Needles. So that covers everything on the mainland of Kalandor. And the last pet that I want to talk about is actually over here in the drain eye starting area. Now what you can do is you can just create a drain eye and then go catch one of these guys. Or if you have any alliance characters, you could head up that way. Um, but on this particular island, I really like the Ravager Hatchling. Now this guy here, he's got a high amount of attack. He's got a fairly good amount of speed. Like for a power power breed, to have 276 speed is really, really nice. Uh, he's got a little bit less health than his average, but that's the way Blizzard balances these pets, is they go in and, you know, if he's got a high attack, he's going to either have low health or low speed. So this guy's got a high attack, relatively high speed, and kind of on the lower end of health. But he's got Rend, uh, which isn't, like, crazy good, because 
You know, he's not faster than a ton of pets. So maybe go for the power speed breed as well and try out Rend. You know, maybe that's something I'll try. But he also hits really, really hard with Rampage. Yeah, 451. Let's see. Rampage. Um, he hits. Yeah, I think he's actually the hardest hitting Rampage user in the game. Yeah, that's what it's looking like. Yeah. So Ravager Hatchling. He's got the hardest hitting Rampage in the whole game. So he's the last guy that I pick up from Kalendor. And that wraps it up with all the best pets that I would pick up from every zone in Kalendor, especially while leveling. You can go back in and grind for everything and get your uh, zookeeper achievement. But yeah, those are the ones that I would snag right now.